Uh, my name is Xing. I work for Autodesk. Uh, today I'm presenting this topic. Um, how do I say? It's more like it's more uh, more about an idea or a, or a thought experiment rather than anything with a uh, with uh, with any practical substance in it. And if you're looking for any Clojure code in it, uh, you probably uh, will be disappointed because there isn't any. Um, okay, so let me just get started with this. The topic is uh, uh, about functional microservices. Uh, this idea came to me uh, when I, working, uh, when I uh, was working on a couple of uh, microservice project because, I've, because in those projects I found, found out the microservices didn't deliver the things that, uh, that, that has been promised to us. So, uh, okay, let me just get started with, uh, with this uh, slide. So this is me, I'm a uh, that. Uh, I call myself a polyglot poly, uh, developer because I'm comfortable to code in many uh, different languages. I'm a super fine Haskell, even though I'm, I've been stuck in the beginner phase for many years. Yeah. What is that? As the software developer in test. That's a, okay. yeah. So to start on this, uh, basically in the beginning we have the monoliths, and uh, we all we're all aware of the problem associated with monoliths. A typical monolith system is really huge and very complicated, and nobody knows where are things, and. Uh, any time you make any little change, you have to redeploy everything, and any little change could have the potential to bring down the entire system. So then, then afterwards, it's microservice. So we turn to microservice for solutions to, to those problems. But I'm, unfortunately, my experience with microservice is that the same mistake had been made all over again just in a different fashion, in a, in a way that that actually harder to debug, and harder to diagnose. So it's the same. It's the same spaghetti. Uh, it's the same spaghetti at at all. So here got the uh, it got the same same thing. Let's say when you read write when two services read uh, write into a shared data store, then everything breaks, and the service could have uh, many many dependencies. So a little change in one. In one of the in one of the uh, microservice somewhere could lead to uh, could have a cascading effect on 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 the other part that's seemingly unrelated and and of course there are un unaccounted for side effects again in your microservice you can just uh, call whatever uh, other service you want and then yeah basically every mistake will be made in monoliths. We, we could find them in microservice projects as well. Uh, so, so, what, uh, so that led me to th think, can functional programming help at all? Because we know in functional programming, there's a focus to write your function in, uh, as, pure, as pure as possible. And there's a tendency to isolate the set effects to the places uh, that, uh, they belong to. And then I wonder if I can bring this, uh, uh, those learnings from functional programming into the microservices. And spe uh, specifically, can we actually model uh, microservice as functions? So if we, if we take that view, then every service uh, should be like this. You send in a request, the service does something and give you a response. Uh, but this service can only be the function if it always give, gives you back the same response for the same request every time. So essentially, it's not always pure. So that, uh, there are roughly two kind of, uh, uh, how to say, the non-purity in the uh, non-purity. Could, you could have internal states, because your internal states gonna, gonna affect the, uh, the response it gives back to the user for the, for the seemingly same request. It could, and it could have external effects. An external effect is that uh, your service may not have the answer, uh, it may not have the answer at hand to, un to answer a request, so you need to reach out to another service to fetch their answer, then give a response. In this way, there's, a, 
uh, in this way, this uh, this is side effects it means you had to call something somebody else to give you back something. So to mod, so to make your service pure uh, in a functional way, then there there's there are certain ways to deal with this two, uh, these two kind of uh, 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 this kind of side effects. First, we look at the internal state. How do we handle the internal states? Uh, we begin. We begin from here. Now we know with internal with internal state in place, this is not a pure. This service won't be pure, because for the same request, it could get different response depending on your state. So, an easy way to solve this is to bring the state uh, into. Uh, how do I say? Uh, bring the state as part of the input into your service. So we could see in the like this. So it just I had an uh, extra argument. It's called the state. Uh, but the state are not. Co uh, how do I say? Yeah, just go ahead. So, but the state. Uh, how do I say? Uh, are those, uh, those states are not. Um, uh, how do I say? Uh, sorry. Okay, let's, uh, let me just go ahead. So we could actually see the states as a uh, as a reduced over the incoming uh, the previous incoming request. It's built up from your previous request. Uh, this is th this is a thing called CQRS. Even uh, I guess we know what it stands for. Uh, it stands for Command Query Responsibility seg Segregation. What it essentially means. Uh, every request com comes into your service can be one can be one of the two. It can be either a command. Command is something to ha command is something sent to your service, but doesn't expect a response. Uh, this those command will help you. Uh, this command, uh, sorry, the service will build up the, the state over this over this command, and the query is something doesn't change doesn't change the internal state of the of your service. Uh, so basically, it's just asking a question, and the service uh, will compute an answer from its internal state and the query itself. Now, we, uh, with, us, uh, with us in mind, so we, so we got this. So, your service, so whenever, whenever your service asked, uh, is asked a question, that's a query, it can work out, it can work out the response from, uh, from this query itself and its initial state, and all, its pre all the command it received previously. Okay. So this, this is how we model the internal, uh, internal states uh, if we want our service, if we want to wheel our service as a pure function. Yeah. Okay. At this moment, uh, any questions? Oh, are you guys all following? Yeah. Yes, please. Keep a state for the list of comments. Sorry. Oh, sorry. So we don't want to keep the state as the reduced state. Oh, this this state. So uh, the second line, there's the reduced state, right? This one, this state. Yes. yes. So so basically, to model the internal state, if we want to see the service as a pure uh, as a pure function, then this state must must become an extra uh, parameter to this service. And where this, how this state, uh, and here is explain how, how this state actually built up. It built up from this so man. In the last line, I yes. understand mm -hmm. where the query comes from. Yes. It comes from external source. Yes. I understand where the initial comes from. It's part of our yeah. definition. Yes. It's internal. Mm -hmm. uh, the commands. Yes. Where do the list of commands come from? Okay, here's the thing. Uh, when you have the service, you receive, also, you receive uh, many, many requests. And the request can either be a command or a query. Mm -hmm. For the commands, for the command, uh, for commands, the, the just, uh, for the sorry for the command command request, uh, they don't expect a response. Those commands help those commands help the service to build up the, its uh, its internal states. Yeah. But today mm -hmm. I will send a command. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow I will send another command. Yes. And then the next day I will send a query. Yeah. Yes. Until, until I send my query, mm -hmm. nothing needs to happen. Uh, yeah, uh, that's true. Yes. Yeah. That, but that's at, right. the, at the point I send my query, mm -hmm. how will the service know 
the command I sent yesterday and the day before. Oh, because your service, your service, let's say, just think about your service has a little, uh, little database to, it, to its own. Yes, so, we so keep every keep command. State in, in the, in the service. Uh, yes, you keep those state, or you can say uh, just transform this, uh, those command into a way and store it, store, store uh, locally as a, as a, as its own state. Yeah. So that's why. <laughs> Okay, so next. So basically, we see the service at this. We have a series of uh, command queries, command queries coming through this service, and it gives out a series of responses to out. In this way, we actually see this service at, it's, a, it's actually just a transformer of a stream. It transforms a stream, it takes the input stream, it produces the, uh, produce the output stream. This way. Okay, this clear. Uh, we can see a little, uh, little made-up example. So how this, how this thing work. Let's say we have the service called counter. Then here's, here's this. Uh, this is the input, input stream, and this is the output stream. Here. So input, you see, uh, uh, command plus one plus one plus one. Then the query was that what's the number. When the service receives those commands, it builds up its internal, its internal state, just say, uh, adding everything together. Now here, the re, uh, here it answers three, then you do another two, then it answers five. Yeah. <coughs> okay, this, uh, this is about the, how to handle internal states. Any, any more questions before we move into the next part? Okay. Okay. Um, sometimes, sometimes the service, uh, our service, need to reach out to the ex to the external world to interact with other services, and to model to model uh, to model this. Uh, this uh, this is a term I made up. It's called effect effectful response. The idea is that the service itself. Uh, doesn't perform, but doesn't actually perform any of those uh, external requests, at any of those uh, external effects. What it what it can do is that it can return a response that include those uh, those effect is intent to perform. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You with me? So. Uh, so the service doesn't do, uh, doesn't actually perform any of those, but but somebody somebody has to. So uh, I call this somebody the boundary. So you can think about it. Uh, your our our nice our nice and pure services living inside a how to say uh, living uh, live inside a room. In this room, everything is provided. Uh, provided to the service, so it can remain pure. But somebody, but somebody need need to do this uh, dirty work, and it's a, and that's the boundary of the service they li live in. So boundary is kind of like like this. So let's say when the user when the user makes a request, the bu the boundary uh, so uh, uh, how do you say the the boundary captured the request and. And made another request into the service itself, into this service. The service say, "Hey, uh, to answer this request, there's something. There's something I, I don't have. I don't know yet. So you need to ask. So you need to ask another service for a piece of information. Uh, so uh, so instead instead of say for this service to reach out to this uh, to this to this external service directly, it just return uh, it returns uh, a request to perform." Uh, to perform this request, they will call it the effect. So it re wh when the boundary sees this, okay, you don't have the answer yet, so I have nothing to give back to the user, but I'm going to help you to uh, to get the answer from the from the external service. Then the, the boundary pushes. Uh, remember the, the the command query, command query. They push another command back back into service. Then this boundary can ask that question again. Do you have Do you have the answer now? Then the service can say, Okay, now I have, I have the I have the response. The boundary says, Okay, now you have a complete response. I can send it back to user. 
So, so for this boundary, it simply help the. So, in this way, this boundary, this boundary help this service to remain pure. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just see another made up example. Uh, you can see the the little square, the, the square in the middle, is the boundary. And this is uh, in, this uh, input uh, this uh, input uh, stream of the service, and this is the output. Here uh, you can see you can see here the user. So this service, what they're going to do is just uh, summing up some random numbers. So the user can send send in the request, say add a random random number, add a random number, add a random number, and then ask a question: What's the total at the, at this moment? So the, so, so the boundary send the request. To here as a command to say add a, add a random number, add a run, the random number, and ask question, what's the total? At this moment, this service doesn't have the total because it only, it only knows is that it needs three random numbers to be generated. So it, this, so this response, it, it just say, hey, I don't have the answer yet, and please help me to, please, uh, please give me three random number. When the boundary, bound, then the, this boundary reach out to this service, Asking for those numbers, then those numbers come back, back to the boundary. The boundary then feed those numbers back into the input stream of the service. Now you got the plus five, plus eighteen, plus. Now asking total again, and the total is there. Okay. Questions? Yes, please. Uh, how is the uh, request for the three random numbers connected to the uh, result. Connected to the result. Like, say you had two requests for the random numbers. Yeah. You know, we got the random numbers that you asked for, and they went for another request. Sorry, uh, sorry. You, got the, uh, you mean this service? Yeah, it? yeah. Uh, like how does it coordinate? Uh, how does it coordinate that? Uh, okay, let, let's say, let, okay. Uh, let's say this uh, it's only received these two. It do yeah. doesn't have the third yet. At this moment, if you ask this, uh, if you ask this total at, th at this point, it's gonna just re return. It's just gonna return a response similar to this one. But instead of asking for three random numbers, at this moment you can ask for one because you already have two. It can its internal state can can recognize. Okay, now I have two random number fulfilled, and I still need the third one. Okay, so if you yeah. ask for like. Yeah. Uh, if you got two requests, yeah. which are each three random numbers mm -hmm. coming at the same time, would they just get random uh, so this of the six random numbers each? Ah, I see your point. Uh, because this for this service, let's uh, because we have this input uh, this uh, input stream yeah. in the in the in the in this stream, this uh, how do I say? Then every item in this stream has has its, its own place, so it's not possible for two, let's say, ended up in the let's say arrived at the same time, so you had to. So, so this service always processed item the one by one. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So that's it. That's this one. So basically, in this way, we just uh, uh, from the uh, from the things we just talked about. Now we can actually see uh, services as functions. That means for every service, we can write down. We can write down this. Uh, uh, how do you say this formula? Then we can, and um, then, then we can list out. Then we can list out. We can just uh, list out this input, this output. If we put something input, then we uh, we can predict what the output should be. This uh, to me is part, uh, particularly uh, attractive <coughs> because I'm a, I'm an asset. This a uh, system looks like this are the easiest to test. And also, you can you can see this uh, the services as stream transformers. Essentially, you receive a stream of uh, uh, incoming uh, events or requests, then you produce another uh, stream with its responses. Uh, to take this wheel, uh, it's it's kind of easy to uh, to composing. It's easy to compose uh, the services together to act as a bigger service, but also. But, uh, but still display the same char characteristics. Yeah. So the benefit you get from this, number one is crystal, is crystal clear API contract that not only help me as the tester, that also helps 
uh, all the consumers with their service. And there will be no surprise in the hidden side effects because all the side effects, whether it's internal or external, uh, must be modeled and reflected in the formula uh, we just saw. And, and by following this model, there will be no shared mutable states because all the communications must be through must be through this uh, must be thr through those in, uh, input and output streams, and as a as a uh, as a natural consequence consequence of this, the service will become uh, become functionally composable. That's gonna open a lot of door, open a lot of doors. So yeah, so that's that's uh, yeah. So that's all for this talk. So. Any questions, please? Yes, please. I have two questions. Yes. Um, the first one is regarding the first part where you mm. try to eliminate this eternal state. Yes. What I understood is the uh, same pattern as uh, uh, event sourcing. Uh, yes, no, that's, that's a, uh, yes, that's where I borrowed the, uh, the idea from. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the second, second mm. part where mm -hmm. it's trying to eliminate the source, uh, the side effect from external dependencies. Yes. So if you deploy the example you mentioned, so mm -hmm. microservice architecture, you yeah. already deploy the container. The container? Yeah, the you mean the boundary? The boundary. Uh, uh, in, most of the, in most cases, those, those boundaries will, uh, will be in the form of, uh, let's say, how do I say it, other, other services. Let's say you, you could have a, you could have something here uh, as your boundary and taking care of the actual uh, uh, user request and response. And then you can have your, those pure services underneath that, and here it orchestrates all of this together. You can take it in this form. Okay. Yeah. So is that still a micro service? That guy is probably not a micro service. Uh, well, this is not a service that we, uh, as we, we talk about here, but you can, uh, how do I say this? Uh, but but the, those dirty work, uh, somebody has to do the dirty work, I say. <laughs> That's uh, But we can limit those dirty work uh, uh, into those places, to those places, to those the limited uh, places. So the vast majority of your, uh, um, sorry, the vast majority part of your system remains pure. Yeah. And yeah. Okay. Yes, please. Coming back to Isaac's mm -hmm. question. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that you're making the assumption that uh, everything is processed sequentially and everything arrives just as like you send it, mm -hmm. but you know that network is not reliable. Oh uh, yes, I know. And yeah, you can you can get like you send message one and message two. Mm -hmm. First you receive message two, mm -hmm. then you receive message. Yeah, two. Uh, this one uh, is actually when we when we think about the service as a stream transformers. Uh, how do I say this? The transforming streams are kind of a solved problem. You can uh, there are um, uh, many. Uh, ac academic papers or, or libraries uh, exist out there to help you to do to do this. I'm sure the, I'm sure those those problems are already solved by uh, in uh, in one of those places. Let's say uh, let's say when you say that there could be missing there could be missing even there could be missing events or there could be duplicates. And the one way of solving this, for example, is uh, we can. Uh, we can, you can borrow the idea, let's say, from the TCP, TCP connection. You know, when TCP, the way TCP works, it is if you receive one, two, three, and then five, it's going to wait for for a while for the number four. It won't it won't deliver number five to the downstream uh, to the downstream uh, application yet before it receives four. There there are, there are ways of solving those. Uh, uh, there are ways to solve uh, those problems, and this. Uh, just by modeling this as a uh, modeling that as a stream transformers and apply those uh, already uh, how to say it, those uh, apply those existing solutions, uh, then I'll say pretty much those problems can be solved in real time. Can that be also implemented in a functional way? Sorry. Can that also be implemented in a functional? Uh, way? Probably not. i will say in that in that case. Yeah. So there's still <laughs> some mutation in the. Oh yes, uh, this, uh, as the, uh, uh, a pure pure uh, function is not useful. Someone has to do the dirty work. It's just a wire way to do the uh, wire. Those dirty work are done. That matters. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
That's it. Yeah, if that's it. Thank you. Good. Thank you.